and welcome. I'm Melinda Akimami. Tonight, President Buhari is set to join other world leaders to discuss ways of ensuring global peace as he visits Armistice Museum ahead of the Paris Peace Forum. Troops of the Nigerian army clear Boko Haram insurgents from seven Bornu communities as state government begins reconstruction of infrastructure. Reactions to a release of candidates list by INEC, some affected aspirants threaten legal battle. And U.S. President Donald Trump and his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron meet in Paris to iron out differences on European defense. On business news tonight, London Stock Exchange Group launches reports on African capital markets with recommendations and development strategies to increase global investment flows for the continent. And on sports news tonight, new Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton takes pole position for Brazilian Grand Prix ahead of Ferrari Sebastian Vettel. Begin from outside Nigeria in Paris, where the president is set to join other world leaders tomorrow for the commemoration of the centenary anniversary of the armistice, which is signed in November 1918 between the Allied forces and Germany to end the First World War. This is part of activities lined up for the first edition of the Paris Peace Forum, taking place between November the 11th and the 13th. During the visit, the president and his delegation, which includes some governors, will hold an interactive session with the Nigerian community in France. The world leaders, to be joined by the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, will, during the three-day forum, discuss plans on global peace and the importance of a collective action. President Buhari will also attend a luncheon hosted by his French counterpart, Emmanuel Macron, in honor of visiting heads of delegations. discuss more about the president's itinerary and his visit to Paris, France. We're being joined by his special advisor on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. Good evening. Now tell us what the president has been up to today. Well, you know, the president arrived here last night. So today he got briefed on uh, the the program for the whole summit by the foreign affairs minister and then this evening he visited the Dossier Museum. Uh, that, that museum has the best of uh, French art and some memorabilia on the First World War. You know that the, the, the time of this peace forum is also the time to mark the 100 years of the armistice. 100 years after the First World War ended. As, as we speak, the president is about rounding off uh, a dinner with other world leaders being hosted by the French president. Now, what about the meeting with the Nigerian community in France? Any major talking points? Well, that will hold on Monday. And uh, the, the issues that will come up there will, will, will be the ones generated by the Nigerians in diaspora. They are going to bring up the issues which the president would uh, attend to as best as possible. Now, on this global meeting, what is Nigeria bringing to the table? What are we presenting to world leaders? Well, each leader is going to speak on his or her experience uh, on keeping the peace. You know there are issues around the world. We have in Nigeria Boko Haram, we have Islamic State of West Africa, we have ISIS, we have Taliban. Almost every part of the world has one thing or the other to raise. So leaders are going to bring that to the table, their experiences, keeping the peace, in their countries, in their regions. But our president specifically tomorrow will talk about stopping illicit flows 
out of Africa. You know, he's the champion of anti-corruption in Africa. And corruption has to do with insecurity. As long as resources continue to flow out of countries, flow out of the continent, there will be insecurity because there will be lack of development, there will be lack of jobs. So the president is going to draw the nexus between corruption and insecurity. And as long as there is insecurity, there can be peace. That is what the president is going to talk about tomorrow. President spokesperson, Mr. Femi Additional, many thanks for speaking with us on the News at 10. I'm back here in Nigeria. The battle to reclaim every part of Bronu State from Boko Haram insurgents has continued, and the Nigerian army says it has cleared suspected members of the terrorist group from seven communities in the state. According to the army, troops of 25 Task Force Brigade Chibok and 28 Task Force Brigade Dambua recorded the success during a joint clearance operation from Gumsuri to Gamburi area of the state. Now, during that operation, the soldiers were said to have engaged the insurgents at Mude, a village ahead of Gumsuri, but the insurgents fled due to the army's superior firepower, leaving some items behind. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army has redeployed some of its top guns from Operation Lafia Dole as well as Operation Delta Safe as part of a routine posting. The command headquarters theater commander Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Abba Diko, has been replaced by Major General Benson Akiru Lui from Headquarters 3 Division. And more communities in Bronu State are showing resilience in the face of terror. The state government is rebuilding structures in all accessible local government headquarters where the people can put up while military operations continue in the hinterlands. In Nganzai local government area, villagers have all migrated to the safest local government area in town. Gajaram is the local government headquarters of Ngazai local government area, where recently displaced people from surrounding villages are taking refuge. Gajaram is now considered a safe town where the people can put up while military operations continue in the hinterlands. For this reason, the governor of Borno State, Kashim Shetima, decided to visit the people to show that his administration is committed to ending the challenges being experienced by the people. The displaced persons are excited to see the governor in their community. For Alahaji Muhammad Mungno, a federal lawmaker, many farmers' hopes have been dashed because armed insurgents have chased them out of their lands, looted their produces, and also set ablaze their farmlands. All the nooks and crannies of Gonzai local government, except Gajiram town, are now, have now migrated to Gajiram. And as a result of that, in the process of their migration, in the process of the forceful migration, they have left behind their food stops, they have left behind their animals, and they have left behind their means of livelihood. Governor Kashima explains that they have achieved significant feats in areas of school development, roads, hospitals, agriculture and housing, development projects, as well as humanitarian services. We have to acknowledge the tremendous sacrifices made by officers and men of the Nigerian Armed Forces. If we compare the story set of appears four years ago with what it is now, there is cause for us to celebrate. But still, a lot needs to be done, especially in the countryside. The people who are now faced with secondary displacement are being supported with food, clothes and other items for which they are full of gratitude. We appreciate them and we would always welcome assistance at any time because we're poor people. The governor also uses the opportunity to commission a 500-unit housing estate with a mega school, while metropolitan buildings destroyed by insurgents are also being rebuilt. Nigerians have the responsibility to unite against the enemies of the country and ensure the country does not descend into genocide uh, like the one experienced in Rwanda. And these were the sentiments of the head of civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, at the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center, 
where she and her team paid homage to the victims of the 1994 genocide. Our correspondent, Kayla Amirgua, reports that the delegates were educated on the post-conflict models of the Rwandan government. It is day four of the post-conflict learning visit to Rwanda and Nigerian delegates converge on the Rwandan Governance Board, which monitors citizen satisfaction with services provided by governments. At a given level of leadership, we declare our assets and our belongings to the office of the Ombudsman. Next was a visit to the Rwandan National Public Service Commission. The recruitment before genocide and, uh, was based on who knows who. You know, it was based on nepotism, it was based on uh, which, which region you came from, which ethnicity you came from. So it was uh, not objective, it was very subjective. And this was uh, one of the one of the evils that this government decided to combat immediately. The delegates then made a trip to the Rwandan Genocide Memorial Center, home to 250,000 bodies of victims of the genocide, where the head of the civil service of the federation lays a wreath in honor of the dead. Two hundred and fifty thousand bodies are buried over there, bodies that have been found since the genocide in 1994. And right behind me is the museum, a reminder of the harrowing experience that the country had in 1994. They make their way into the museum where they are intimated on the horrors of the 1994 genocide. Here we have the director of the radio and this is the journalist. Both of them were the key in this hatred propaganda. The one was released and uh, by International Court for Rwanda, a critical decision. And also the, the second one is still serving his terminal courts. The Rwandan government treats the delegates to a cocktail and the head of the civil service of the federation commends the Rwandan government on the success of their investment drive. I understand from what I've gathered that there's a long queue of development partners coming in to try to partner and you're doing what you used to do in childhood in the mini mining men. You select the one you want and you leave the one you don't want. This is very, very impressive and it's a big challenge for us. It has been an emotional few days for the delegates. And apart from learning these post-conflict modules, there's a resounding admiration for the resilience of the people. From Kigali, Rwanda. Thank you so much. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. And back home in Nigeria, we return once more to Bronu State, where Calm is said to have returned to Bale Shuari village near Medugri after troops of Operation Lafia Adole engaged armed insurgents in the area. The insurgents had attacked the village located behind Gewa Barracks, Medugri, forcing residents and the people living around there to flee. The insurgents were said to have set their houses ablaze. The assailants were repelled by troops supported by the air component of Operation Lafia Adole. Gewa Barracks is home to a detention facility for Boko Haram suspects and has been a target for the militants in the past. And in part two, after the break, River State Governor Yeson Wike promises to pay 30,000 Naira as minimum wage if the amount is approved by the federal government. Please stay with us.